In uh, this video, what I'd like to do is kind of go over some nuts and bolts, mostly bolts. I kind of want to do things like go over how to find the grades, talk a little bit about what the grades mean. We're going to go over all the different parts of the bolts. And then I want to go over how bolts are called out. And by that, I mean, uh, you know, half by 13 by two inches. I want to, I want to talk about how they're labeled on a bolt bin and how you can go and reorder bolts. Let's go ahead and jump right into it. What I want to start with is the parts of the bolts. Um, this is going to be a quick overview. The reason I want to go over this is mainly so when I'm talking about the dimensions and stuff like that, and I'm referring to things like the shank or the head or the threads, you know what I'm talking about. So let's go ahead and get started. Here we have a bolt. Now, let's go ahead and start at the top and we'll just work our way down to and we'll go over all the parts. The first thing I want to point out is going to be this head. Now, the head of the bolt really has nothing to do with the overall measurement of a bolt, nothing to do with thread pitch, nothing to do with any of that stuff. But from here to over here is actually the measurement used to figure out what wrench you would need to turn this bolt. So typically they are hex, sometimes you'll get a, a, a eight point or possibly a 12 point and it would still be considered a uh, just a normal bolt. What we're working with today is just gonna be these hex bolts um, all of this, these notches on top are going to be your grade. So let's really quickly go over um, bolt grading. There's three different types of grade bolts when it comes to a standard bolt. Now there are metric and standard are the two different types we are going to talk about today, but we'll start with standard and then we'll spend a little bit of time on metric. So the first thing is if you had a bolt that has no markings whatsoever, that's going to be a, a grade three bolt. Now, if it has three of these tick marks or three of these lines, can you see these guys right here? One, two, and then three. It's actually gonna be a grade five. This is, gets a little bit confusing here. Why don't they just put in as many marks as the grade is, but they, this is three is for grade five. Now our next bolt has six lines on it, okay? Going all the way around the head. Now, if you get a bolt that has six lines, that means that it's a grade eight bolt. So, like I said, we're gonna have three different grades. We're gonna have, if there's no markings, it's going to be a grade three. If it has three markings, it's gonna be a grade five. And if it's got six markings, it's gonna be a grade eight. Now, if we compare that to our metric sizes, so we have two metric sizes here. The grading system is based off of these numbers right here. So we got 8.8, .8, we got a 10.9 right here. And I believe there's even actually like a 12 point something. But that one's, that's a pretty, uh, pretty high-end bolt there. If we were trying to compare our bolts, our standard bolts, to our uh, metric bolts here, an 8.8 .8 would actually be a grade 5, okay? And our grade, and a grade 10.9 would actually be a grade 8. All right, so I know that bolt grading can actually be kind of, kind of confusing, but let me just kind of clarify it. When we're saying it's a grade 8, we're talking about how strong that bolt is. Now that's either how much shearing force it can withstand, how much pulling force. We're just talking about how strong that bolt is. So let's go ahead and move back to the parts of the bolt and then let's keep going. If we flip this, uh, this bolt around, what we have from the bottom of the head all the way down to the tip is what we call the shank. On the shank, we have things like a shoulder. All this smooth stuff right here is your shoulder. And then right here down is going to be what they call the threads. Now the threads are what obviously what tightens the bolt down. It's what pulls it in and, and locks down whatever you're, whatever you're trying to bolt down. So let's go ahead and go over those uh, bolt callouts. All right, so before we begin, I wanted to explain a little bit about what you're looking at. So the bolt that we're looking for is going to be a half by 13 by one and a half. So it's kind of confusing because there's a dash and there's an X in there. The dash and the X it means by. So it's half by 13 by one and a half, okay? Don't ask me why the dash is, is there compared to the X. Why are they both X's or why aren't they both dashes? I don't, I don't know that, but just know that it's, a, it's like a measurement. It's kind of like saying it's a two by four or something like that. It's one by the next by the next, all right? Let's start at the beginning. The first thing it says is a half inch. Now that half inch is actually measuring the diameter of our bolt. So when I, and when I say the diameter, I mean from side to side. So I'm gonna use these calipers just to show you from side to side, okay? And you can see that it lines up to our, our half inch mark pretty dang close, about 10,000 or 9,000 short. 
One thing that I do catch people doing is they will be going in between the threads or something like that to determine how big a bolt is. And as you can see, that doesn't work. Half inch bolt is half inch everywhere on the shoulder, half inch on the, on the outsides of the threads. Okay. So if somebody asks for a half inch bolt, it's to the, it's the outside diameter from here to here. The next thing listed is dash 13. So dash 13 is measuring how many threads per inch that that bolt has. So even if the bolt head or bolt has less than an inch here, it's still how many threads could fit in within that inch. So what I'm saying on this bolt, it, it, we actually have the correct size. So if I go to one inch and I've got it from here to here, there's 13 threads in between that one inch area. Okay. So if you were going to a fine thread, which there's, there's two different types of threads out there, fine and coarse from almost all bolts. And sometimes there's even a very fine thread. We ha we can have up to 20 threads per inch, 13 threads per inch. It depends on what that make of that bolt is. So make sure you're always looking at that to determine how many threads per inch you have. All right. Now you might be asking yourself, why do we have a fine thread and why do we have a coarse thread? Well, there's a couple things with a, with a coarse thread, you're able to screw it into threads a little bit faster. Um, it can get a, a little bit better bite if there's dirt and things like that. While a fine thread is about 10% stronger and is more resistant to having vibration back it out. You see fine thread screws all the time on things like motors and stuff. So the next thing that we have listed is the by one and a half. The by one and a half is saying from the bottom of the head all the way to the end should be an inch and a half on the bolt that we're talking about. The last thing that you're sometimes going to see is the UNC or the UNF or the USS. Those stands for Unified National Fine or Unified National Course. The USS stands for United States Standard Threads. You don't typically see that anymore, but you still do here and there. So just know if you see it, that that's, it's saying it's a American bolt that's on the inch system. Well, if you see a UNC, it's saying it's a coarse bolt. So right off the bat, you know that you're going to end up with a coarse bolt. If it's a UNF, it's telling you right off the bat, you're ending up with a fine bolt. That should be all you need to know to go ahead and find the bolts and the bins. That should be all you need to do is if, you, if you're going to go buy one or order one. So let's talk a little bit more about the metric bolts and how they compare to our standard bolts. So I don't have a lot of metric bolts right at the moment. We're, we're on the process of ordering them. But what I got is just a bolt. So if we were to take our M10-1.25 by 35 millimeters and compare it to this bolt, what, I, what we would be saying is the ten, M10, so M stands for metric. It's saying it's going to be a metric bolt of some sort. It's going to be 10 millimeters in diameter. So that's from one side to the other, including the threads. So if we were to compare it like we did to the last bolt with our calipers here, from one side to the other is going to be 10 millimeters. The next one is dash one, two, five. The dash one, two, five is not referring to threads per inch in the metric case. It's referring to the thread pitch. So how much angle is on each one of these threads. Now, the reason this is so important, this is why they say the metric system is so much better is because of how well the thread pitch holds down bolts. The thread pitch does change how many threads per inch you do have, but it's not an exact measurement of threads per inch. Now be careful with this one because you can, you can get a bolt that's a 10 millimeter and it might come in a 1.25. It might also come in a 1.50 or a 2.5 or something like that. There's a bunch of different thread pitches for every single bolt. It gets a little bit confusing if you're trying to match up stuff. So the last thing is the dash or the by 35 millimeter. And again, that's just a measurement from the bottom of the head to the very end of your bolt. And that's going to go ahead and complete that whole measurement. So if you were going to go look at something, you would say, I, I need a 10 millimeter by 1.25 pitch by 35 millimeter long. That might be what you'd say. So I wanted to finish up just talking about nuts. Now, remember, this is a bolt. These over here are nuts. All right. So the nut is what goes on to your bolt and this is what could lock it down. Now the threads on this have to match the threads on this. Like I said before, there is a coarse and a fine. So make sure that your threads match. 
Now, another option you can go with is what they call a nylock. A nylock has this little rubber plasticky seal at the top, and what that does is it actually locks down to the threads so that this bolt will not back itself off. There are a couple other things that do that same type of work, and we're gonna talk about those in a later video, but as far as a nut goes, you can get a nylock and it'll do the same thing. So that's everything that I wanted to talk about in our hex bolt fastener section. I hope this helps you guys with the next upcoming labs. Uh, please let me know if you have any questions or need any of my help.